to power. Also coming up tonight, company of Ghana. Integrate LPG circulation module without mandating the disposal of their current assets. And elsewhere on the foreign front leader of a Kenyan cult who allegedly encouraged over 400 followers to starve themselves to death pleads not guilty to manslaughter. We've got details of all these stories and many more coming up in the next 60 minutes. Remember, we're streaming live on Facebook. We're also live on your DSTV channel 279. You can join us with your views, comments and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. Feel free to visit any of our social media pages on Facebook and on X. And this is your election command center. The National Democratic Congress, NDC, has announced there will be no academic fees for level 100 students entering the university if it wins the 2024 elections. Before we subject the statement to further scrutiny, please take a listen. I don't know if you're excited about the few policies I've mentioned yet, but if you're not excited, I'm sure the next one is going to shock you. I want you all to say with me, no fees stress. No fees stress. What are we saying? President John Mahama is simply promising that one, for all university entrants into level 100, you are not paying academic fees. No academic fees for all level 100 students. We, we've had uh, many stories. We've had uh, many stories about students who finish school with 6 A's, 7 A's, 8 A's, and we have to start crowdfunding sources for them so they can enter into investing. All of that will be a thing of the past in the next NDC administration. The second part of this policy is the Student Loan Trust Fund Plus. The student loan is basically dead as it is. When President Mahama comes back, he would revamp the Student Loan Trust Fund. And all those who struggle after the first year free academic tuition in university can apply to the Student Loan Trust Fund so they are able to continue their education without stress. Meanwhile, flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress, John Mahama, has given the firm assurance that no Ghanaian youth will be left behind in terms of job creation in the next NDC administration. Now speaking to the youth wing of the party at the launch of its manifesto uh, to mark International Youth Day, John Mahama says a major breakthrough for the youth in securing jobs will be his much-anticipated 24-hour policy. An electrifying atmosphere charged to galvanize the base of the youth of the party. John Mahama walked into the Ohini Konedu Auditorium together with his running mate, Professor Nana Jane Opukwajima. The world under the auspices of the United Nations celebrates International Youth Day that offers opportunities to accelerate sustainable development of the youth. Leading what has been described as the Green Army of the NDC, its national youth organizer, Giorgio Pareado, says the youth of Ghana are widely awake and ready to grab opportunities. We elected governments to solve our problems. Unfortunately, this government has become our problem that you and I will have to deal with every day. To make issues worse and to insult us further, when we complained about this untold hardship and we cried out to our Vice President Mahmoud Bahamia, he goes round on stage and plays Onyame Eshirame Asimu. God has blessed me and you are paid. 
That is what they give us with the scorbic dance all over this country. On the specific issues of the Greek minister boasting of the NPP using any means possible to stay in power, the youth organizer says the NDC will remain resolute. This election is our revolution without a gun. It's a revolution of mind and wit. It's a revolution where the gun will be the ballot and will go out there and vote massively. And we will make sure that that ballot box is protected. Mounting the podium with assurances to the youth, the former head of state says the challenges of the youth will be taken more seriously under his next administration with priority. In my commitment to establish a dedicated ministry for youth development, this ministry will centralize the coordination of youth initiatives in Ghana. It will facilitate job creation. It will promote entrepreneurship and to provide scholarships and enhance youth participation in decision making. Political bias and nepotism have tarnished the recruitment processes within Ghana's security services and our public sector. This undermines trust in public institutions and creates disillusionment amongst our youth. Under my leadership, recruitment will be decentralized to ensure equitable representation of all our citizenry within the security agencies and our public services. We are committed to supporting digital startups and incubation hubs and training one million young Ghanaians in coding. And if you want to know who has plagiarized who, go to the NDC 2020 manifesto and look at page 88 and you see the Million Coders program there. Additionally, we will invest the equivalent of $3 billion in collaboration with the private sector to build a vibrant technology and fintech industry that will create jobs and boost economic growth in Ghana. A youth manifesto that has its roots in the yet-to-be-launched People's Manifesto of the NDC, John Mahama, is promising jobs. Right, uh, we can do some further analysis on this. Let's go live to engage with Professor Jonathan Fletcher, the University of Ghana College of Education. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your time, and thanks for joining us here on News 360. So we're hearing all these lofty ideas being proposed by the uh, flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress, and there's very little to say about what the numbers look like, um, how much is involved, how government is going to fund this. We already know the difficulties that we're having to face with the funding of uh, free senior high school uh, what's your own take on this? Well, thank you very much. Uh, and I would like to take this opportunity to uh, thank you, uh, Terry's viewers and listeners. Oh, yes, that, that's, that's good. I, I listen to speak too. And um, I, I would say at this stage, uh, it's very, very difficult for everyone uh, to get people to, uh, you know, in, in their manifesto. Uh, and the reason is very simple, because you expect uh, the manifesto to contain, you know, good things. And, and like any manifesto, uh, the things you read are things that are good, that, that, that you expect, uh, that, that the, the uh, authors of the manifesto will, will, will put together. So I'm not really surprised about the good things that we, we, we're hearing from the manifesto. And obviously, I believe strongly that any support uh, that can be given to the youth is great because uh, they, they need as much as support that they can get. So, uh, so that is incorporated in the manifesto. And I think that... Talking about education, for example, uh, it also talks about uh, uh, the CHSS system, which would improve. Well, we're able to expect to hear that. Um, that special education will be supported. Everyone is expected to hear that. So, so all the things that we are hearing, particularly about education, for me, we are great things. And, and at this stage, I will say uh, that God is in the details. And obviously, there are things that, that we don't know yet. And so, so we need to, you know, maybe wait and see, or in some cases, if we have data, then we will need the data to say that, well, 15 years ago, uh, we had a government that said this about education. What happened? Eight years ago, we had a government that said this about education. What happened? So, and, and remember that if we're talking to you, we're talking about 15 to 35. Now, people who are 31 years old were you in in 20, uh, uh, um, um, you know, 50 
years ago, so that would be 2008 or 2008, uh, people who are 31 were youth at the time. They are youth. So they've actually seen two, you know, governments. They've seen the NDP government for eight years. They've seen the NDP government for eight years. Now, now these people um, were, 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 were promised something in education. Now, for me, this is the time for, for all of us to go back and see uh, what was promised and what was delivered. Both in both governments. So I would say that at this stage it's very difficult to, to doubt whatever anyone is saying. I respect what they of that particular party. People are doing the same good things. I understand yeah. that, uh, but also quite apart from. Uh, you know, paying uh, the fees for level 100 students who are just entering to the university. He also talks about bringing back life into the Student Loan Trust. Now, we know we're in an IMF dispensation and there's already difficulty in raising funds for the economy. Now, how is government going to do all this? Yeah, again, again, because now for me personally, if, if there is any support that can be given in education and if it's affordable, why not? So the question then you ask yourself, is it affordable? But no one can say whether it's affordable or not. That's why I say that thought is in the details, or if you like the devil is in the details, we, we, we don't have enough information to be able to say that this is going to happen or not. And all I'm saying is that there are things that we can, we can judge today, you know, based on, on, on data that we have. But I think sometimes it's very difficult to say that a particular government is going to be able to do A, B, or C. You know, so my, I just say, as I said, this day, it's very difficult to say whether what uh, the various segments are saying or the various political parties are saying uh, will happen or not. And we, if we want to check that, then I'm saying that we have the data, we have, we, have, we have the data that we have to go back and check that. You know, in 2008, or in 2008, this political party said they were going to do this in education. If they do the those things, then you come to 20, um, it's like 2016, this government said we're going to do this education. We're going to do that. So what I'm, what I'm trying to make is that it's difficult for us to, 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 to say anything uh, simply because we, we've had, you know, professors being in what being discussed. So that's my position. The position I'm taking is that it's the University of Ghana College of Education uh, joining us to do some analysis on the latest promise by uh, NDC flag bearer John Mahama. Another launch of the NDC Youth Manifesto, the party promised sustainable jobs and a more effective education system. A report by Judith Brown. An electric atmosphere it was at the NDC Manifesto launch where hundreds of youth gathered eager to hear the party's plans for their future. Dawned in party paraphernalia, they expressed high expectations ahead of the launch. The bottom line for me or the youth is simple, job creation. Because as, tertiary, as a tertiary student, there's hope that after you finish school, there's a job waiting for you, that you can also start your life as a youth going in the country and then make it to the top. But then we see a statistical increase of graduates that are unemployed every year, and it's so appalling. What the youth need right now are jobs. For example, look at the number of nurses who are running away from this country because there are no jobs. And recently we heard they are coming to employ over 15,000 people. But we have like four um, batches that have not been employed since they took power. Presently in Ghana, there are high levels of unemployment. There is high inflation. Imagine you have no work and you still have to buy goods and services at a very high rate. In the last few years, we have experienced galloping inflation. In economics, we call it galloping inflation. We've had inflation go as high as 50.1%. And it seems their concerns were addressed. Well, the NDC Youth Manifesto launch has revealed a comprehensive plan to address youth unemployment and empower young Ghanaians. Well, key among the highlights of this particular manifesto launch include the training of one million young Ghanaians in coding, creating jobs through a 24-hour economy with three workers per shift, equipping youth with skills and job opportunities, free Wi-Fi in schools and public places, support for young entrepreneurs and women-owned businesses, as well as abolishing the double-track system and teacher licensure exam. Uh, they also talked about increasing access to quality education and affordable health care. Well, the NDC promises to bring about change and address the challenges facing Ghana's youth through this manifesto launch. 
flag bearer of the party, John Jumani Mahama, expressed his intention to appoint more youth in government if the party is given the nod come December 7. And for young party communicators, the initiative is indeed laudable. Usually when people talk about the reality of, you know, the older generation destroying this country without fear of the consequences coming to themselves, um, people mistake it to think that we are sacking old people or young people want power for themselves and all. But in most cases, when individuals know that the things they do have a bearing on themselves as well, they act better. And we need the level of innovation and thinking that comes with youth. We need a fresh blood in the system, you know, so that we have the people with the energy and the expertise, people who are not battling with a lot of things, to be at the helm of affairs, to scale up the work and then help restructure our fallen country. Reacting to the party's policy on the Women's Bank, Thomas Central Parliamentary aspirant Emmy Bright explained the initiative was a win for the women in Ghana. The more empowered we are by processes that are transparent and equitable, the less it's possible for uh, people that uh, hope to buy our minds and our consciences to toy with us. I'm looking for, for you know, that day when women can walk in with sound business ideas and with business support. Judith Brown, TV3 News. All right, so we're going to still while longer on politics, away from the uh, University of Professional Studies Auditorium. Let me take you live to the Bukum Boxing Emporium, where my colleague uh, Emmanuel Samani has arrived uh, to bring us latest updates. Of course, the uh, former President John Mahama uh, is meeting uh, some residents of Bukum this evening. Uh, Samani, what more can you tell us? Well, thank you very much, Parkways. See, good evening from the Bukum Boxing Arena, where, as you can hear, the energy is palpable. As Yannis, he continues his robust campaign for the launch of Collins the Plague. Now, as you know, we saw the first space launch of I'm afraid uh, we've got to end that line. Uh, there's a bit of difficulty with our technical line. Uh, I'm sure we'll re-establish contact with Emmanuel Samani later on. But of course, the uh, form of uh, President John Mahama is in the Bukum uh, Boxing Arena to meet up with uh, residents there and also have a one-on-one -on -one engagement with them later this evening. And away from the NDC, the vice president has promised the youth of Ghana to support their startups and small and medium scale enterprises if voted into power. Speaking to mark this year's International Youth Day, Dr. Baumia says he's confident this will provide skills to more than one million youth in the country. Dr. Mohamed Baumia emphasized government's digital initiatives in spearheading growth and development. He recalled the mobile money interoperability and the deployment of a drone system as major initiatives by the government. The vice president emphasized the introduction of a credit scoring system when voted. To mark this year's International Youth Day, Vice President Dr. Mohamed Baumia underscored the relevance of the youth in nation building. He promised to provide skills to over 1 million youth to engage in digital employment. Dr. Mohamed Baumia also spoke about support for the youth who engage in startups. Enterprise agency and youth start offered targeted assistance to small and medium-sized enterprises and helping them to grow. We recently also launched an 8.2 billion CD fund to support small and medium-sized enterprises to further demonstrate our commitment to youth development. And these initiatives reflect our comprehensive strategy to foster innovation, drive economic growth, and create opportunities for the younger generation. The Minister of Youth and Sports, Mohamed Youssef, assured the Ghanaian youth of more opportunities. Ghana is committed in building entrepreneurial skills of young people, and this is evident through the series of government programs such as the digital marketing an entrepreneurship training program under the National Youth Authority. 
This year's International Youth Day is on the theme, From Clicks to Progress. Youth across the globe are leading innovations and offering unprecedented opportunities for sustainable development through digital technologies. A reminder to so watching News 360. This is our major news bulletin for the day. We're streaming live on Facebook. We're also live on your DSTV channel 279. Uh, we're still a while longer on politics. And the NPP parliamentary candidate for Damango, Samuel Abu Jinapo, has thrown a big challenge to his opponent in the region to a live parliamentary debate to explain their respective visions, policies and achievements to voters. Addressing hundreds of party supporters at the Zongo Lagbonto electoral area of the Damango constituency, the Member of Parliament stated he has done enough for him to be retained in the constituency. He challenged his opponent to a debate. Abu Jinapur touted his achievements on infrastructure, agriculture, youth employment, women empowerment and many others. Let's bring it on. We are ready for them. This campaign in August. This is the third year we are in. By the end of the month, we will go to the second year. And God willing, with your support and with the blessings of Almighty, by September, we will be in the third year. And by October, we will be in the fourth year. And November, we will put it to the fifth year. And we will see who will be who in Damango constituency. By 10 p.m., the country will hear the lawyer Abu Dinapro has retained the Diamond seat for the new Patriotic Party. The greatest of all the news we hear is that by midnight, that uh, not only has the MPP clinched majority seat in Savannah, but Muhammad Dubaumia has taken a commanding lead in the presidential vote of the new Patriotic Party here in Ghana. <laughs> In more news tonight, today is International Youth Day and young people the world over dominate population statistics. Within the most populous age group, however, lies dreams, opportunities and challenges alike. On International Youth Day, Enyunam Haliga explores how the advancement in technology is enabling today's youth address Stephen challenges. This is what today's world is dominated by. The constant clicks and taps of screens, of a world that is fully digital and soon virtual reality for all things digital too. The potential of digital technology has been seen, its effect felt and its ever-evolving progress currently in motion. At the global level, digitalization is at the heart and center of providing solutions and critical in achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals. In Ghana, mobile money is fast and according to the United Nations, it is helping the poor access to financial inclusion. Jean Cloud is a food content creator in Ghana. He, like some other youth, are leveraging on digital platforms to earn a living. Beginning in 2020, when COVID hit, Jean Claude is helping alleviate hunger, meeting SDG goal too. For me, it was more of a, something to take my time because I was mainly at home doing nothing and. So I was doing that just to while away time. So the journey has been um, just like any business. It's been up and down. Um, I wouldn't say it's been rosy all through, but it's been a, a great journey. I really didn't get any negative, um, uh, what's it called, comments or feedback from friends and family. I think the support was there from the onset. In the beginning, I was just doing it for fun. I was just doing it to share to people online. But um, along the line, I started to work with brands. I started to um, get deals from businesses. Jean is not alone. A fifth year doctor of medical laboratory science student at the University of Development Studies with the help of artificial intelligence has developed a platform which uses artificial intelligence to identify cancerous cells, making laboratory work easier. I noticed a number of uh, steps with a system that will that they take some time for the remote and memory to then I'm very strong blending my technical knowledge by building CI models that would kind of talk to the time taking for certain test results to be taken 
At the heart of digitalization is internet access. Elsewhere, the Conference of Principals of Colleges of Education Ghana, uh, Princov, is yet to decide on whether to close down the colleges or not. Now, teachers of the Colleges of Education have been on strike for two months over conditions of service, forcing the Teacher Trainees Association of Ghana to call for the closure of the colleges. Here's a news desk report. On June 14, teachers of all the 46 colleges of education embarked on a nationwide strike to demand implementation of the arbitral award and conditions of service by the National Labor Commission. They are also demanding the migration of staff onto the university payroll structure, the payment of the all-year-round allowance for 2022, and the book and research top-up allowances. Meetings were held to iron out issues and get the teachers back to the classrooms, but to no avail. I have a letter, 11 July 2024. This is coming from Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. Request for nomination to constitute a committee to migrate staff of the colleges of education. This is a letter coming to GTEC requesting for financial support to implement SAVE. So on the issue of the migration, it is unfortunate that CTAG is a little bit skeptical about the commitment of GTEC to ensure that they are migrated. The teachers were threatened of non-payment of their July salaries, but they could not be bothered. Students, including first years who reported to school with full anticipation of academic learning, could not have the opportunity to be taught by their tutors. Most of them, who could not bear the financial difficulties on the campuses, had to go back home with just a few left on the campuses. It's been two months of no academic activity, leaving students helpless and frustrated. The strike is worrying us because we've been first-year students. We're not expecting this thing. Students are in, in a confused state as I speak, especially level 400. We rented outside thinking that the semester will be with, within the th three-month range. Now, the strike has been over a month now. I'm doing mathematics, so most of the formulas, I need to get it from the lecturers and then get the understanding well. But I, I really find it difficult to cope with such formulas. On August 9, the Teacher Trainees Association of Ghana, TTAC, urged the Conference of Principals of Colleges of Education, Prinkoff, to close down the colleges by Monday, August 12th, in more news tonight, the Electricity Company of Ghana has once again blamed the CD depreciation for losses recorded in the 2022 financial year. Parliament's Public Accounts Committee today had cause to express concern regarding the state of the power distributor after it noted it has in the last few years been recording losses. Income. What's, in, what's the other income? It has to do with providing other services such as distribution transformers and uh, expanding other areas or industrial zones that are applied for by customers. Your distribution expenses, however, also saw a huge jump in administrative expenses also recorded seem above 30%, 36.3% for administrative expenses and 32.6% for distribution expenses. Finance cost, understandable, also went up slightly, 11%. Any reason for this? Mr. Chair, our distribution costs going up is as a result of uh, Forex. Most of our jobs that we do within ECG are all priced in the US dollars. The meter purchases, the transformer purchases, the wood pool purchases, and in fact, the intensification jobs themselves are all priced in the United States dollars. So that's, that's the reason why the distribution cost has gone up. 
Amanda is still watching News 360 on Major News Bulletin for the day. Now, the Jamestown Fishing Harbour construction is completed and awaiting commissioning. Now, touring the harbour, the Minister of Transport expressed satisfaction about work done. But some fishermen say the harbour will not favour the operations. My colleague Joseph Armstrong has a rest of the story. The Minister assured the fishermen the facility will soon be commissioned. So far, I'm impressed about what they've done. But... This is just uh, for the artists. I think proper engineering work, GPT should be able to tell us that per their engineering analysis, the work is good. But for the 3Ds and what we've seen, I think it's a fantastic project. He expressed satisfaction about the work done so far, emphasizing the importance of equipping residents with the necessary skills to maintain the facility once it is commissioned. We use people's money in building facilities. The one is handed over to the, the use agency or the user agency. They are not able to maintain it for the general benefit of everybody. And for me, that is a concern. But for the fisher folk, they say the fishing harbor does not favor their work. There's a challenge that we face whenever there's a storm coming from eastward. From eastward, uh, when we hang out our canoe, as you can see over there, when the storm is coming, the speed of the storm do you turn the canoes to eat the bridge or the wharf. So about four to five months ago, about 50 canoes got spoiled. There's no shed for a fisherman whenever he went to fishing and made a catch and, I mean, discharge the fish. There's no shed for them to, I mean, stay on that. The project involved dredging the harbor basin, constructing hydraulic structures and building various management facilities. The engineering company handling the project is CRCC Harbour and China Engineering Bureau Group Limited. As the Jamestown Fishing Harbour awaits commissioning by the president, Nanado Dankwa Ekufuado, the fisher folk here have some concerns. Their concerns include they not having a shade to protect them against the sun rays and also that of a rainstorm. They also complain about inadequate sea breaker. They want to be engaged more so they can raise some of these concerns to the appropriate authorities. Joseph Armstrong, go WTV3, Jamestown Fishing Harbour, Accra. In celebration of International Youth Day, a Christian charity-led group called Passion International Ghana has hosted an event focused on empowering young people with skills and knowledge to lead sustainable initiatives for their future prospects. This forms part of their commitment on youth development by leveraging the role of technology to mark this occasion. Using the theme Click to Act Youth Digital Empowering for a Greener Tomorrow demonstrates how Compassion International is committed in preparing the youth to take advantage of the digital space to enhance their lives. Speaking at the event, Reverend Dr. Samuel Minsa said young Ghanaians need investment in their lives to take up leadership positions in the country. It is in our collective interest as elderly people that we should invest in the youth of today because we will be the beneficiary of that particular uh, generation. If we fail to do that, we'll be miserable in our old age. Head of Human Resources at the National Youth Authority, Echo Ishan, mentioned government remains committed in harnessing the full potential of every young person in Ghana. The National Youth Authority remains committed to empowering young people that enhance digital literacy and promote entrepreneurship. The Ministry of Youth and Sports, represented by their deputy director, also said government has put up a national youth policy and urged them to take advantage of global trends, especially in technology. We have a national youth policy and we want to assure you of government support and availability to cooperate with anybody and everybody and facilitate their work that will bring development to our nation and especially our youth. An alumni of Compassion International Youth Development Program shared his thoughts. As part of the International Youth Day celebration, Compassion Ghana has decided to encourage young people to develop their skill sets by taking advantage of uh, the digital revolution to um, better their lives in the future. Am I still watching News 360? We're going to go for a quick break. When we return, we've got the very latest in the world of business.
Hi there, good evening and welcome to the very latest in the world of business. Now, energy strategist Dr. Yusuf Suleimana is urging the National Petroleum Authority, the NPA, to find a way to integrate LPG marketers into the cylinder recirculation model without having them to, to scrap their existing equipment and infrastructure. He noted that allowing the marketers to continue using their existing infrastructure saves them from significant financial losses and preserves their investments. The LPG Marketing Companies Association of Ghana, effective today, August 12, started a boycott of Sage Petroleum and Blue Ocean to protect businesses of its members. The two bulk suppliers have been licensed to retail LPG through the cylinder recirculation model. This, the LPG Marketers Association believes, is an attempt to grant monopolistic powers to the two entities. While the association has no objection to the suppliers becoming retailers, they argue that it's unfair for them to also supply LPG to the association's members while competing against them in the retail space. Energy strategist Dr. Yusuf Suleimana has urged the National Petroleum Authority to intervene in the dispute with disgruntled LPG marketers to prevent a potential disruption in LPG supply. But the regulator will have to probably sit down and engage further uh, with this uh, disgruntled uh, uh, members of the association, uh, I mean the LPG marketers and then the uh, tanker drivers uh, to be able to resolve this issue. Uh, because sometimes issues start like this in, in their minute form and when they are not handled or nip in the bud, uh, the potential for them to skyrocket into levels that we may not like it is high. He is also urging the NPA to urgently explore ways to integrate the LPG marketers into the recirculation model without requiring them to decommission their existing infrastructure. If they could assimilate it into the uh, current model, that would have been great. If they can find a, a position, I mean a place for them within the chain, the distribution chain of the current model, uh, that would be fine. So I already regulated to look into that to see probably where some of these places can be found. Otherwise, we may have to give them a little bit of time. In other news tonight, the executive director of the Center for Environmental Management and Sustainable Energy has observed the National Petroleum Authority's inadequate oversight and monitoring have enabled some oil marketing companies to circumvent the regulator's floor price and policy. This, according to Benjamin Insia, uh, undermines the purpose of the policy, which was intended to prevent price undercutting and unfair competition among OMCs. Uh, first uh, pricing window of August uh, 2024 and uh, the data has shown uh, that there are some recalcitrant OMCs that are selling uh, prices of petrol and diesel uh, below the floor price set by the MPA and we think that uh, this is so because there has not been strict enforcement of this particular uh, price floor uh, regulation uh, set out uh, by the MPA since April and these two companies are selling their diesel prices below the uh, floor price which is against uh, the industry regulation and creating unfair uh, competition among industry uh, OMCs. Uh, we think that NPA must ensure that there's strict monitoring, uh, strict auditing of these OMCs to realize that all of them sell at the floor price indicative published by the NPA because if we allow others to sell below, uh, what we are doing is uh, creating an unfair competition where these companies that are selling below this particular floor price attract uh, consumers compared to the others and that we think is not fair reminder if you just join us uh, you just joined us you're watching the business news segment on news 360. now ghana will rely heavily on treasury bills as well as multilateral and bilateral lenders to meet its financing needs until 2027 due to restricted access to the international capital markets this is according to the world bank's eighth ghana economic update which highlights the country's ongoing challenges in securing external funding amid global economic pressures. The 43 Business News Desk report has more. Government financing during 2024 to 2026 is expected to be limited to multilateral and bilateral partners and domestic treasury bills. According to the World Bank, Ghana will rely mainly on T-bills, multilateral and other bilateral lenders for financing until 2027. From 2023 to 2026, the World Bank is expected to disburse about $3 billion, including about $1.5 billion for project loans, $1.15 billion for budget support, and $400 million for other projects. 
over the same period, the African Development Bank would disburse $338 million, of which $200 million would be earmarked for project loans and grants and $103 million for budget support during 2023 to 2024. On the domestic side, the World Bank foresees a reintroduction of medium and long-term domestic debt insurance in 2025 as the domestic bond market is restored. Well, that's all for the very latest in the world of business. For more news, you can log on to our website. It's www.3news.com. My name is Parkish Yassari. Entertainment news segment is powered by 3 Entertainment. Good evening. Let's do some entertainment news updates here on News 360. My name is Noella Donko. Now, in a captivating storytelling night, all 16 contestants delivered a standout performances, each bringing their unique regional tales to life. Ashanti Regency Fiye stole the spotlight, earning the first star performer award of the season with a compelling tale about how the porcupine became the national emblem of the Ashanti Warriors. That is where we got a Diana Piesie. Oh, just say, oh, just say, yeah, 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 oh, just say, oh, just say. The competition for the most beautiful crown is heating up. This week, contestants took to the stage to unveil culturally rich stories from their regions, each sharing the fascinating backstories behind their tales. With hunger in search of food, stumbled upon a special plant, intriguing to behold. Guess what? He uprooted one and tasted the seeds. Mmm, tastes great. There and then, he named it Sunkam. From the enigmatic Nigeria wall in the northeast region to the mythical origins of the Tana River and the inspiring story of the fearless female king of Greater Accra, the stories captivated and resonated throughout the night. And no matter the heavy attack that comes on it, the porcupine defends itself with its sharp quills. In a standout moment, Ashanti Regency Free Year clinched the first star performer award of the season with a riveting story. Additionally, Bono Regency Ra and McCaffrey impressed the judges, earning the best costume and most eloquent awards of the night, respectively. Dr. Sarah Dogbaji was the guest judge for the night. For me, the thing I like about GMB is the cultural touch that you give to the pageant. It's, it's not just an empty beauty, but a beauty that is based on knowledge of oneself and culture. That is the big thing for me. And Anything about young people storytelling, I'm in for it, you know. So I was excited that from this performance, people are going to get to know some folk tales, some historical stories, stories of origin and stories of identity. The, the people are going to get a lot more information about their Ghanaian culture. Support your favorite contestant by dialing star 713 star 13 hash to vote or cash a vote on the TV3 reality app. While in front of us, spreading beyond Oman Kesim. Make sure you're voting for your favorite contestant because next week there will definitely be an eviction. And that's it for the entertainment segment here on News 360. My name is Noel Adoko.